Hello and welcome to another video on factor mixture modeling in M+. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials usually related to structural equation modeling or other latent variable models and often using the M plus software. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to like this video and to check out the description for additional videos and workshops. In this video, I want to discuss some of the M plus output for a factor mixture model. In a separate video, I have already discussed the M plus syntax for specifying a factor mixture model and so here I want to focus on some of the key results that you get in an M plus output file. You can see that we're already in the middle of it. I skipped some of the parts at the top and so one thing that you should check uh, before you take a look at your fit statistics and your parameter estimates is that the model estimation terminated normally and that there's no other warning message or other message here at this point before you get your fit statistics. Factor mixture models are quite complex, especially when you have a complex factor model and or when you have many classes in your mixture model. And so you always want to make sure that everything went well with the estimation, that you don't have any kind of error message. And if there is one, then pay close attention to it and try to figure out what might have gone wrong. So in this case, everything was fine. And so next we get the model fit information. Notice that for a factor mixture model with two or more classes, you don't get an overall chi-square test of model fit. You do get a log li uh, likelihood value here and you get information criteria. And so often what um, we do when we select a factor mixture model, we look at the BIC value or the sample size adjusted BIC value and we compare these values across solutions with different numbers of classes. So for example, we estimate the one class model, a regular uh, confirmatory factor model, and then the two class model, the three class model, maybe a four class model, and then we compare those BIC values across those different solutions to pick the one that has the lowest BIC as um, a model selection criterion. What we also get in the output as a, um, or what is relatively, what comes relatively soon after the model fit statistics are the class size parameters for a factor mixture model or other latent class model, where you can look at the proportions in each class. So here you can see that in our example, 16.436% were in class one and 83.564% were in class two. Together, these proportions obviously add up to 1.0 because people have to be assigned to one class um, and only one class. And so the second class here was the much larger class than the first class. And we'll see later what characterizes these two classes, how they were different um, here in the results. You get the entropy measure as an overall measure of classification, quality, entropy should be high. It's not a criterion for model selection, in my opinion, that is super useful. What is actually more useful to look at are the average latent class probabilities for the most likely latent class membership that you get in this little table here, where you can see that individuals who were assigned to class one on average were assigned with 86.8% certainty. So that's good. So that means that classification accuracy on average was high for class one and was even higher for class two, about 95%. So those individuals who had the highest probability for class two on average had a probability of 94.8% of belonging to class two. That's also very good. So people were in the solution were classified with high certainty on average. Next are the model results. And so you get the standardized parameter estimates in the same way as you would get them for a regular single class confirmatory factor model, except that the results are split by class. So first you get the results for latent class one, the factor loadings here with their standard errors and Z statistics and P values for factor one, 
then for factor two. In this case, we have a two factor model. Each factor has two indicators. Um, then we get the covariance between the two factors, which here is 0.339. And the factor means are estimated in class one. Notice that the factor mean for F1 is 4.136 and for F2 is 0.977. Now these numbers aren't super informative, so to say if you don't know the scale of the indicators. In this case, the first factor is a spatial ability factor. The indicators MRT1 and MRT2 are test halves of a spatial ability test and the indicators of the second test are math scores. So here we have a math factor and a spatial factor. You can see that their covariance is not statistically significant. You can see here the p-value is 0.089, so that's not statistically significant. And the means here are later on relevant when we compare them to class two. So right now it's hard to interpret what this actually, what these means actually mean, but we can, we will see later that that actually has um, an interpretation relative to the means in class two. Next are the intercepts or additive constants in the measurement model that are estimated for all indicators. The factor variances are given and the error or residual variances for the indicators. Now notice that here in this model, I was using the M plus default settings for a factor mixture model. And so as a result, you can see that the parameter estimates in latent class two are actually all the same as in class one for corresponding parameters, except for the means. So you can see the means in class two, they are zero. And so that's not, so say a coincidence, they weren't estimated to be exactly zero, but in fact, this is a standard setting in or default setting in M plus where the last class, in this case, the second class, because there are only two, but in general, the last class has means that are fixed at zero. And that's to say for identification. That's similar to what we do in a multi-group factor model where we often set the means in one group to zero, and then we estimate the means in the other groups for comparison purposes. And so M plus handles um, factor mixture models in the same way and picks as the default the last class as a reference class and sets the means to zero so that the other means can be compared to those means. And so this now means that those means for class one that we saw here actually can be interpreted directly as a mean difference relative to class two. So you can see that F1, the mean for F1 was a lot higher than zero and it's highly significant. You can see the p-value is 0. 0.000. So um, the mean is significantly different from zero, which then implies that it's significantly different from the mean in class two. So in other words, class one was a class of high performers in terms of the mental rotations test, because that's what F1 is. And if the F1 mean in class one is a lot higher, um, then in class two. So that was a high performing class with regard to spatial abilities and was also a class that performed higher with regard to the math test because that mean is also positive, a positive number and it is statistically significantly different from zero, meaning it's significantly different from class, from the class two mean. So in other words, here the two class solution results in the first class being a high performing class or higher performing class, we could say, than the second class where the means are set to zero. Now, if you wanted to calculate an effect size, for example, latent Cohen's D or something like that to make those mean differences more interpretable, you could of course do this by dividing each mean by the square root of the variance. The variances here are the same across groups, so they under the setting. So you could take the square root to get the standard deviation and then divide your mean in class one by the standard deviation, the square root of this variance to get a Cohen's D measure. And you could then um, calculate a more uh, easily interpretable standardized mean difference for this um, comparison. Now notice again that 
all the parameter estimates other than the means are exactly the same. The loadings are the same here across class 1 and class 2 for all indicators. The covariance between the factors is the same. Intercepts are the same. Variances are the same. And residual variances are the same. And so this is the default setting in M plus where only the means are allowed to vary across classes. Now, of course, there are many other possibilities what you could examine for uh, differences between latent classes and in M plus you can set other parameters free other than the means by including class specific statements in your syntax and at some point I'll make a video about how to do that as well. So just notice that when you use the default settings for um, a factor mixture model in M plus then everything is held equal or held invariant across classes except for the factor means that may not be realistic and so you may want to think about freeing up other parameters for example factor variances might differ across classes but also parameters related to the measurement model loadings or something like that so this is something to think about now M plus uses the simplest possible or most parsimonious setting so that you can easily fit such a model and also so that you can make comparisons of the means across classes that are meaningful because those comparisons of the factor means require that you have measurement invariance meaning at least equal factor loadings and equal intercepts across classes for meaningful comparisons. Okay, the last thing that is um, relevant here is the parameter for the categorical latent variable, so meaning for the latent class variable. This is a logistic regression intercept parameter that corresponds to the class sizes. So this is, so to say, a class size parameter, but in logit metric, in logistic regression metric, and based on this estimate here, you can get your class sizes. Now, the, it's not really something that you need to figure out yourself because the class sizes were given here or in terms of proportions. So those are the parameter estimates that are directly derived from this latent variable, uh, what M plus calls a category latent variable mean here, which really is an, an logistic regression intercept parameter. Oh, and then also what you get is standardized parameter estimates. I almost forgot about that. So the completely standardized solution can also be output for a factor mixture model. And you see this here. So then you get your standardized loadings and the correlation between factors in the standardized solution here as well. And you can see that again, all parameters here are the same across the classes except for the means. Everything else is held equal across classes by default and then as a result also the R squared values or reliabilities for the indicators are the ex exact same across classes because you have equal loadings and equal factor variances and equal residual variances and so then also those R squared values are the exact same. That would be different if you freed up for example the factor variances across classes or and or if you freed up error variances, residual variances for the indicators, then you would no longer get the exact same estimates here. I hope you found this video useful to get started with a factor mixture analysis in M plus and learn about the default settings in M plus and default output that you get for such an analysis. If you found this video useful, then please consider subscribing to the channel and uh, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional videos and workshops and I'll see you next week.